Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, and my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we're going to speak about Manchester United winning 2-1 against Barcelona and 4-3 on aggregate to go through to the Europa League round of 16. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Manchester United 2, Barcelona 1 and oh, does that feel good. <laughs> what a win for Eric Tenag's team. The atmosphere was amazing from start to finish, by the way. <laughs> and even though it was far from straightforward, the team was able to come up with the groceries. Blessings to everybody, man. What a, what a result. What a moment, definitely something to celebrate and it shows how far we've come thus far but there's still a long way to go. But before we get into the breakdown of the game, <laughs> how about a song, a bit of music to soothe the mind? Question of the day. So ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how this works, here it is. We'll supply you with a question and by the end of the episode, you've got to use your noggin or the internet to find an answer, slap it in the comments and we'll tell you if you were correct. So here is today's question of the day. Today's, let's get to it. When was the last time Manchester United and Newcastle met in a cup final? And what was the score? Obviously themed due to the fact that we will be facing them in a Carabao Cup final on Sunday Which when this video is out will be a day away Are you excited? Let us know in the comments and also get that answer down in the comment section as well Manchester United much like in the first leg just didn't start well at all The crowd! Yes! Hey the crowd were bouncing from okay. even before the game and shout out to the fans at Old Trafford, man. Because just like The Rock. Oh, I almost stumbled there. <laughs> anyway, you brought it. And then some, ladies and gents. So big up yourself. But back to the game. Just looking at that Barcelona lineup. It seemed like they wanted to pack the midfield and close down the spaces available to Manchester United in possession. And it worked. You could see that even on counter-attacking or near enough opportunities, we were frustratingly giving the ball away. And that didn't mean we had no chances, however. I think our best of the half came when Bruno was played in by Casemiro. A little bit of an awkward angle, but a lot of space to run into. And as Bruno shoots to what looked like a far post shot, to Stegen was able to save with his feet. This is where the moment of confusion and frustration sets in. Jules Koundé crosses the ball in for Barcelona and as the ball is headed away momentarily towards the other fullback Alex Balde, Bruno Fernandes is closing him down and in my opinion gently grabs a hold of his arm and Balde goes down. Referee calls for a penalty, no hesitation. Never. My initial thoughts were that the decision was extremely soft and when I heard the explanation of Peter Walton on BT, he said it was the time that Bruno was holding on to the player, which made up the mind of the ref and I was just confused. We see decisions like this made once in a while and we also don't, but that's the problem. <laughs> I don't see Bruno impeding Balde to the point where he drops on the ground, but maybe I'm wrong. Let us know in the comment section what you thought about the penalty decision. Rest of the first half had me worried at times because Barcelona were actively looking to add to their lead. They got into dangerous pockets and spaces in central areas but just didn't have the end product. Even at the end of the half when David De Gea misplaced his pass, I was like, we can't go out like this. But if you look at the yards Casemiro covered to eventually get, get a double block in that game. Not just game saving but mentality changing altogether. No doubt there were some things to change around in the second half. Our whole front line for the most part couldn't get into the game and many fans online including myself felt that in the break we needed to opt for the likes of Anthony moving Rashford up top so that we have a different threat of those runners in behind. 
You see that second half, it was absolutely incredible. The changes were made by Ten Hag and it was an instant success. Right. Only a couple minutes in, Bruno saps a pass into the boots of Fred, who from just inside the box strikes the ball with his right foot into the back of the net. The crowd erupted and that was exactly what was needed. I feared that the atmosphere had gone flat because of the way everything was going. So to get the equalising goal in the opening stages of the second half was amazing. It was an amazing thing to witness. The Red Devils were alive and well. The game opened up once again which suited us. But as much as we gained control of the proceedings, that threat of Barcelona on the counter-attack was still there. And a perfect example of that was when Frankie de Jong delivered a pinpoint cross towards the back post where Jules Koundé ghosted in and forced a great save out of David De Gea. Those are the moments when the switch had to stay on. That time, it wasn't the case, but we got away with it. The second goal came through the main man himself, Anthony. Anyway. <laughs> Bright play by Luke Shaw, first to keep the ball in play and back it into the direction of Bruno Fernandes. He then outstrips Rafinha for the ball and slides it into the substitute Alejandro Blonacho. <laughs> A couple of attempts of blocks later, it perfectly rolls out to our Brazilian fidget spinner who calmly side foots the ball past to Stegen once again. Just listen to the crowd! <laughs> Manchester United took the lead and yes, towards the end, I asked, could we hold on to it? At first, that chance at the end where Rafa Varane clears the ball off the line was nerve wracking and it may have been offside, but we wasn't to know that at the time. <laughs> but we survived and to those people that always come out here ridiculing fans for celebrating, listen to this, yeah? Because winning a game like this, See him, listen to this as well. We're in the past. We failed to jump over that hurdle. It's bigger than you ever know. Especially for these players. It instills confidence, belief, and many other things that a successful side needs. And this is only the beginning. With that off my chest, let me hear that music. Question of the day. When was the last time Manchester United and Newcastle met in a cup final? And what was the score? If you talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the tweet now. Back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Don't question question time. Question time. So, how did everybody fare in this episode's question of the day? I ain't gonna waste no time, let's get to the answer. Manchester United in Newcastle last met in the 1999 FA Cup final where Sir Alex Ferguson's team won 2-0 courtesy of goals from Teddy Sheringham and Paul Scholes. Don't think I need to say what that 99 season means to a lot of fans around the world associated with Manchester United. But if you got the answer correct off your memory, slap a 1 in the chat. If you use Google, slap a 2 in the chat. And oh, don't be afraid or ashamed to use Google. Uh -uh. But one thing you should be ashamed of and something that I continuously come week in, week out and have to say it. If you didn't even attempt to answer that question, Considering that everybody has a phone, everybody has a tablet, everybody has a computer and you still decided to reach this stage of the episode and you have nothing, nothing to give. Listen ladies and gentlemen, I'm usually easy to change my attitude, but please, get... okay I'm just, just answer the question. Next episode, how hard is it? All you have to do is type in what happened to this, what happened to that, who was this, who was that, and find the answer. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, look, thank you for watching the end of the episode, you know. 
me and, and CM, we are, we appreciate you a lot. I, I can't lie. We appreciate you. Big game ahead. Big game ahead on Sunday. Carabao Cup final against Newcastle. You thought that Barcelona game and win was big. You know, some people may be laughing at us and joking, but this game is massive. It means a lot to the fans and it means a lot to the players and it yes. could mean a lot to the players and the manager as well. And it will mean a lot to the Newcastle fans and players also. So both teams are going to have to bring their rule. I know Newcastle probably will and Manchester United, I'm confident that we will too. So let's support the lads. It's going to this cup final. Come on, United. CM is going to be there for the stay. United, watch along live from 415 GMT. So be there or be square. Don't miss it, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lot sooner.